You've got a brand new microphone, you've got your recording software set up, but you are not quite getting the audio that you want. Here's how to improve your microphone sound quality and make you sound like a professional with a little tool called Voice Meter Potato. Hello and welcome to the Marketing Toolshed. This is the first video that we're putting out and it's going to be a tutorial for VoiceMeter Potato. Now this is a piece of software that I've been using myself for years and it really makes your sound uh, quality a lot better uh, than it was. You can really tweak your microphone using it. A friend of mine, Kurt Crowley, has just bought himself a new Blue Yeti and I recommended that he get uh, this. Let's take a walkthrough of the software so that you can see what all the fuss is about. Voice meter is what's called a virtual mixer so that it works with your internal audio and your external audio devices and allows you to mix them inside uh, the computer. So it's going to give you settings that will help you enhance your voice or give you routing to multiple devices as well. Now today I'm just going to take a look at enhancing your microphone and using the software with some very basic settings. But before we start, I did want to just mention that if you're going to do this, if you're going to do anything with audio on your computer, get a pair of decent earphones, headphones rather, to do it with. Invest in a good pair if you don't have them. Don't use trendy earphones like Beats, they're not good for clean audio. Don't use Apple earbuds or the, the, the pods that came with your, your iPhone or something cheap you bought at the supermarket. Because what you want to do is get clean audio. And the best way of doing that is using a device that is made specifically for people who are audio engineers in some way. So stick with Sennheiser or Rode, Tascam, Audio Technica, the big um, audio firms. If you stick with any of them, you won't go far wrong. You certainly, even if you buy a cheaper pair of their headphones, they'll be good enough to do the sort of audio that you need to do for business videos and things. So here we are with Voice Meter Potato. This is the main interface. And across the top here, you can see that we have got five hardware inputs. Now, each one of these inputs, we're going to go over a bit later, is called a channel strip. And each one of these is a channel. Uh, each one of these inputs is a channel. And that's the channel strip. And the strip part gives you various different controls. Then you've got these virtual inputs, which is Voice Meter Vio. Voice meter aux and uh, Vio3. Uh, and you really, you don't need to worry too much about any one of these. Um, th th later on, if you use this a, a, a lot, you might find actually there's a, a reason that you might want to use something like this. For now, just ignore it. Um, then you've got these hardware outputs and you've got A1 to A5. And you see the A1 to A5 corresponds to the A1 to A5 that you have down here. So that's nice and, <laughs> nice and simple. Uh, you then have a little bit of output control over here where you've got A1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And you have, uh, so you see that these are noted as physical down here. And you've got virtual output control as well, B1, B2, and B3. And B1, B2, and B3 are B1, B2, and B3 down here. And you'll be able to turn these on and off as you need to. We'll go over that uh, a little bit later though. So um, that's basically all we're going to look at today. I, there's there's lots of other stuff up here that actually you don't need to know about just yet uh, because it's it's a bit too complicated and unless you're doing something really fancy you, you, you're never going to use them. Um, so the first thing that we need to do in order to make sure that this is, is using properly, you see it's a blinking thing there that says select main output device because we haven't done yet. So we're going to click on A1 and we're going to select our speakers. Now my speakers are these. I just click on that and you see I've got a lot of different audio devices on, on the machine. Uh, if you haven't, then that's probably a good thing. You shouldn't have too many devices. Uh, if you haven't bought a lot of different audio equipment and stuff, it, it won't. you won't need to worry about that. Just select the ones that are your speakers and you'll be fine. Uh, the next thing uh, that you have to do is uh, go over to one of your channel strips. So we're going to use hardware one and then we're going to add uh, your microphone to it. So let's select click on the bit that says select input device you get another list up like that and mine is the um, Yeti stereo microphone so we'll click on that 
and all of a sudden you should be able to hear audio if you speak into your microphone. Now the reason is, and you can see this over here, in our master selection look, the one that is labelled A1, you see we've got an output of, and over here we've, we've selected A1 on the channel strip, so that's sending that audio over to A1. And if I turn this off, you'll notice that even though there's a there's still a audio going on over here, there's no audio going on over here. Um, so that means that you've got a, a lot of control about where you send these things. So if, a, if for example, A1 uh, or A2, let's say, is set to your Zoom U24, that's an, another uh, output device there, uh, I can say that I want my voice not to go to the speakers, but just to go to the Zoom U24. And then that is uh, popping up there. There you go. Nice and simple and easy. And similarly, uh, you can do that as well with these B channels down here. You see B1 is selected, and that's going to B1, which is here. And B2 is selected now, and that's going to here as well. Now, this is why I told you about these virtual inputs, even though you're probably not going to use them much. B1, B2, and B3 line up with voice meter voice meter aux and vio3 so that's one two and three and later on when you come to add your audio to skype or to obs like i've done here uh, you're suddenly going to be able to say okay well i want skype to be on b2 and i want uh, say camtasia to be on b1 uh, and that means i can con easily control the levels between what I'm recording on Camtasia and what uh, a phone call might be sound, sounding like on something else. So that's incredibly useful because it means that either A, you can leave your audio set up and you just open up the bright program and it's all working, or if you're on a call with somebody and they, they say, well, look, your voice is far too loud. This has happened to me in the past. You can turn your voice down for that call, but you can still get the clarity that you want in your um, in your actual recording. So what I'm going to do now, first of all, we'll take A2 off because we don't need it. We don't need it. Um, and I'm going to switch over to voice meter so you can hear what my voice sounds like going in through the software. So now you should be hearing me on voice meter alone. Um, it's not a bad sound right out of the box, and I'm I'm trying to be a bit bit careful with my audio here. You can see I'm just turning my audio up and down because if you're not careful, then the sound from your microphone will get so so sound from your headphones will get picked up on your microphone. So I'm just being a little bit careful uh, there. Um, but we've got your microphone in, in voice meter now, and then what you want to do is to start changing some settings. Now, the Yeti is technically a stereo microphone, but if you're a single voice, then you're only a mono voice. So the first thing you can do to help um, with your audio is to go down here, click on the little mono button, and then straight away, you should it should sound louder because you're taking the audio from one channel and you're duplicating it onto both channels. Um, this it also helps cut down on extraneous noise because your mic is basically a mono device, even if you've got a stereo mic. Um, now you're going to want to set the volume, and what I'm going to want to do is turn this off just whilst I'm talking a bit. Um, and the volume right now, as it is, actually is pretty pretty spot on. Because if you see what's happening is that um, I'm not really going outside the green uh, band unless I'm sort of at, at the height of, of speed. If I'm really speaking, if I'm really emphasizing something, then it goes into the red. But it doesn't go into the red um, unless uh, I, you know, for, for sort of normal speech. And that's a good place to be. Now, obviously, I'd set my microphone up with this beforehand, so it was already done but if you've got um something like a blue microphone i've actually turned the gain all the way down on this just so that this setting will work properly and it does mean that i can turn my sound up and down very easily and then double click on that um to to take it back to normal um but you can 
to change the volume on this just click and drag this up or drag it down i actually do often leave it around about uh five or six here because it gives you um you're, you're just peaking in the red all the time uh but you don't you don't need to um Let's bring this down a little bit so that it's not quite so so bad. And I should be able to hear now. Actually, in in many cases, that actually gives you a bit more quality, uh, uh, clarity in some of the sound that you're using. But you've got to be careful because if you push it too far, you'll get some really bad artifacts as it peaks. Um, so let's again, let's take it down a little bit. It doesn't need to be too much, just just enough. Um, and we'll move on to the next thing which is this intellipan window which you don't need to know a lot about um the first thing that you're going to need to do to know is that you can flip through three different screens of that if you right click on it you'll be able to see modulation now modulation changes your voice so that it's, uh, it's this is the way that they did it's horrible, isn't it? You've, You've got, got different, different sorts of modulation. And if you move this up and down and left and right, it will change the way that your voice sounds. Double clicking on it takes it back to normal, which is what ultimately what you're going to want to do to just leave it off. Because um, it's something that you play around with if you're an audio engineer or you want to get an effect from something you don't need to use it as if you right click again you'll get into this 3d panel and that'll change the way that um your voice is placed in a 3d space again you don't need to worry about that because you just want to get good sound and that's where this comes in so this is going to give you two things it's going to give you echo and it's going to give you uh, a little bit of control over eq so let's just take a look at echo for a moment so if i grab this and move it up you'll see that actually it it makes my voice brighter not always a good thing and a little bit echoey like i'm in a, um, a toilet somewhere if i drag this right it makes it much higher so it sounds a little bit like it's going through a telephone uh, and if i drag it all the way left it's incredibly low so um it makes it say it's almost like you're underwater or in a bucket or something like that double clicking on it again takes it back to the center and what i like to do what you really should do with this is think about uh where your voice is on that scale so my voice is around about there and if i just move that there you can see all of a sudden um it's enhancing my voice without um without doing a lot to it it's basically it's boosting the bits of my voice which sound all right and ignoring the bits that, that don't so that's really all you need to be doing with it with the intellipan thing make sure that this is um not too far up you can do this and make it brighter introducing a bit of echo into it but you actually don't need to do that uh you just need to to make your voice sound as um not quite as flat as when it's sat there because that for me that that's a little bit too much on the high end but bringing it down just a, just a little bit uh just enhances that vocal range and everybody has a slightly different vocal range so you'll just need to play around with that and make sure you use something which sounds good to you um finally i wanted to get into uh the idea of a noise gate so what happens if you're recording a video like i am and you're sat at a desk and then you've got to do some type to to demonstrate something you type on the keyboard you can you can hear the keyboard or if you get a, a noise from outside or something like that if you're in a very very busy place um, what you can do is use this thing called a noise gate um, and you can push up this noise gate uh, and I tell you what we'll take it to an extreme so you can see what's happening okay so right now the noise gate is at an extreme and see you can actually hear very the edges of the sound. It doesn't always pick up the first part of my word. I'm actually having to speak closer to the microphone to get it to work. So what the noise gate is doing is saying only activate your microphone 
if the level of noise has reached a certain point, which means that you can kind of cut out typing noises or clicking with a mouse or somebody banging around outside just by doing this. Now I have mine set to 1.9. Uh, it doesn't take away all of the keyboard sounds, especially because my microphone is sat right over my keyboard, um, but it does help an awful lot, especially if you're um, in, a, in a chat room, for example, and you're just listening to what people are saying and you've got a glass perhaps and you're taking a drink. That's the sort of sounds that don't then get through your microphone to the other side. That's why this is quite a quite a good thing. The other thing that you might want to have a quick look at is compression. So the idea of compression is that you have a, a, a waveform that goes all be the way between low and high. Um, and that's a very, very simplified version of, of, a, of a waveform and what it does. So what a, what compression does is it takes the low and it brings it up here a bit and it takes the high and it brings it down there a bit. And a lot of people like compression. A lot of people think that it brings an awful lot to your voice. So let's just turn this on now. And actually, you know, as a, as a source, this sounds an awful lot more like what you might get through radio. Now, this is far too much compression, so we want to take that down uh, a, a little bit to maybe about, about here. So there's a bit of compression. I don't like compression on my voice in this environment because there's a lot of echo in here. And all it really does is it just enhances the echo when I do that. But it's something that's it's worth playing around with just to get the sound that you like. So that's the, the kind of basics. Um, and if you remember earlier, we were talking about uh, different outputs. So let's see how we might add an output. Now, I'm going to use um, voice meter. Sorry, I'm going to use OBS uh, to, to do that. Um, and we're just going to create. OK. So over here, you can see that I've got an input capture and I've just got to choose the device. So what device would you choose? Well, you can choose uh, voice meter output, which will you just make sure you get the one that says VB audio voice meter via. And that's going to output this channel here and B1. OK. Or you can choose a uh, voice meter aux like that. And that's going to output voice meter aux, that channel there, and B2 as well. And it's as simple as that. It's just choosing which device that you want to go through. You can go through Skype. You can go through, you know, anything that you want. If you go through um, anything else, then you'll realize actually there's a way to select an audio device that you want to uh, to do it. And it gives you an awful lot of, of flexibility. Like I said, if you're on a Skype call and you want to record something else, it's very, very simple to do. And that's only the basic setup for voice meter. And there's an awful lot more that you can do with it. But this is the very basics to get a decent quality sound uh, out of your uh, your devices. Um, it's a great system. Uh, it's one that I've been using for a very long time. Uh, you can do uh, an awful lot of things with um, cables, for example. You can get virtual cables that plug into this. But nine times out of ten, everything that you need to get something a little bit more complicated for your audio uh, with a better quality is actually built into this uh, this system. Uh, it's those little changes to things like EQ and your the better control that you have over volume that's actually really going to make the difference. I really hope you give this a go yourself um, and let me know how you're getting on with it. 
And there we have it. Voice meter is probably the quickest and easiest way to get your microphone sounding really great. You bypass a lot of the complex problems that you are often associated with setting up a microphone. It's a really great tool. Why not grab a copy now and have a play? And if you found this useful, please click on the subscribe button. It's not the last video that we'll be making. So don't forget to click on that little bell icon as well. And every time a new video drops, uh, you're going to get notified about it. And that's all from me for now. Until next time, when we explore more tools in our marketing tool shed.